Hello everyone. Um, I don't have a normal sponsor today. Uh, instead, I wanted to talk about my, my own stuff. Uh, I have a merch store and I don't advertise it a ton, even though I always have it in my little like slap title card and down there in the description, but it's, it's getting pretty expansive and I think it might be a good time to talk about it. So many of you might know, I used to be called Bricky Orchid 8. I am a beautiful orchid. An old Microsoft generated Xbox 360 live username. And I changed it to just Bricky because everyone just called me Bricky. And the Orchid 8 part, I actually turned into my merch store. And I just recently got a major office for it, more employees. It's, it's really expanding, kind of crazy. And we're offering a ton more stuff since the last time I ever advertised it. Like there's a ton of designs going over a myriad of things. There's a bunch of original designs like the crest tee or hoodie that says thick thighs save lives in Latin. Very proud of that one. You may have seen the uh, life is hard, but that's okay shirt I wear sometimes. And there's some that are legally distinct and based on things I really enjoy. like. Outer Wilds, one of the best games ever made. I have a really awesome shirt that I like for that one. But not only that, we're actually going really hard into dice and prints. I sell actual physical dice that have the word pog on the six and also the um, twerking Among Us crewmates on the six as, as well. And I sell prints and not not like poster paper prints because poster paper prints aren't good enough quality. We're talking like full on 280 semi gloss. It's the paper that does like the whoa, 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 whoa when you shake it, that like it's actual thick ass good photo paper prints. And we have a, just a brand new one that came out literally this month, which is a little pink bear mascot bee sleeping in this gorgeous thing of fall flowers. It's November, like, come on, like this is the time to have it. And for those of you who are Warhammer people, I have a ton of merch from a just Ridiculous, the podcast, link in the description as well. There's a whole lot now for the store, and I would really like it if you gave it a look. It's orchidate.com. Check out the description. Check out whatever you need to do. It's really been a blast doing it. I wear my own stuff a lot, which might sound narcissistic, but it's really goddamn comfortable. Like, why would I ever buy shirts and hoodies that I wouldn't want to wear myself? I don't know. It seems weird to me. So anyway, if you've already bought something from the store, a recommendation from you down in the comments would be really appreciated for those who haven't. And uh, yeah, give it a look-see. Okay. All right, I'm I'm done with that now. Let's 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 go into the orcs. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Bricky, currently leading the Brick Taker Get Crump a Wah across the solar system. Shooters Blood and Teeth is objectively the best name for an orc video game on the market right now. It also won my heart with this hilarious trailer and demo that came out earlier this year. It's a Warhammer game, and since I am John Warhammer, I might as well give it a shot, you know? A warning there are spoilers in this video, but it's nothing that you should really concern yourself with. But if you want to go in super blind, I guess. Get it, but eh, don't worry too much. I'm gonna be going through the game very similar to my Uncharted video, so you have been warned. Loading up the game, I got the chance to set up my orc in a variety of colors based on orc clans and appearances based on orc units. The Storm Boys, Weird Boys, Goths, Evil Sons, Bad Moon, so on and so forth. Then we get to the opening explaining the story of the game, and well, it sure is a story about orcs. The humans call this place Lutius. Lutius. Stupid name. Stupid Yumi's. The Yumi's been drilling for the gold juice here for ages. Bumping it out, sticking it in their battle wagons to make them go through. Now we want it for our wagons. Make them go through instead. As you can see, this game knows what it's trying to be. That's your overall story, but it's it's not the real story. Because yeah, orcs might want to crump and get resources, but to make it a real orc story, it's gotta be personal. That their hair squeaky snazzy, ain't it, Gargans? I reckon it look more snazzy on my head. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? I's the boss, so I get the snazziest friends. You, I'm having this. <laughs> Whoa! So you're Gargaz, an orc boy, and your damn boss, Gut Ripper, just stole your hair squig. Now, if you're not familiar with Warhammer, orcs don't have hair. Uh, they have animals called squigs that serve a variety of functions, and one of those functions is hair. Listen, dude, th there is a canon story in Warhammer about an orc that goes back in time to kill himself so that he can have two copies of his favorite gun. 
Okay, like, don't worry about it. So the main objective of the story is to get back to the boss and get your hair back. I'm also a little disappointed I didn't have a keep sponsorship for this video. The point is that when the orcs are on screen, this is a proper orc game. The cutscenes are a highlight and they are consistently excellent. So the gameplay of Shooter's Blood and Teeth is a lot like your Metal Slug and Castle Crasher style game. You have a variety of weapons, all of them with ammo capacities, but with overall like unlimited ammo. You start with a simple arsenal of orc boy weapons. We're talking a shooter, a slugger, and a big old melee weapon. But over time, you'll gather five different ranged weapons, including, and you better spell this correctly, the rocket launcher, the boom stick, the burna, and more. This also is accompanied by your dedicated wah button, which represents the green beneath your health bar, of course. When activated, you'll become invulnerable and fire whatever weapons you are holding at an extremely rapid speed. Other than that, you have a dash, a double jump, a crouch, and that's about it. This gameplay is simple because combat is simple because orcs are simple. Don't overcomplicate this with all, the, all those humey mechanics. You an orc. You fight like one. Starting off, you tend to fight either other orcs, naturally, or the Imperium of Man, mainly guardsmen. The guardsmen are also played like an orc would see them, basically as a bunch of doofus nerds. For the Emperor! Ah! Throughout the gameplay, you will also gather teeth. Lots and lots of teeth. Teeth are, of course, currency for orcs. I don't know why I say of course, as if this is common knowledge. Yeah, teeth are teeth and teeth is currency. You can use this teeth to purchase new weapons from the mech boy at his shop located at every single checkpoint. Each gun slot has three new weapons you can buy. This can be a looted human plasma pistol, giant laser beams, looted bolters, a giant saw as a gun, and more. And don't forget, if you shoot the plasma pistol too much, it overheats and damages you. Nobody can forget the exploding plasma pistol. So you make your way through the Imperium, killing everything here and killing everything there, dealing with the occasional kill them all section, and find your way to, of course, the most important part of any game, the Orc Band. Hit it! Since in Orc Law, now that you've killed the boss, you are now the boss, and you get to lead your own army of orcs to get back at Gut Wrecka for once again stealing your hair squig. This leads you to fighting more of the Imperium and increasing the enemy variety in a great way. You have company commanders, commissars, rattling snipers, Ogren, a fucking Lehman Rust Punisher tank, and you blast your way through all of them. A note, I really like the background memes here. Purge the unclean for washing your hands. Sisters! in arms. There's a lot of good little Easter eggs scattered about. But Easter eggs be gone. It's time for our first major, major boss. And the realization that even though this is an orc game, I should not expect canon to even come close to this title. So you, a single orc boy, are about to take on a Bane Blade, 11 barrels of hell, which they don't fire at the same time because, you know, video game. But that's when I realized, yeah, okay, this is going to be shenanigans. It's a pretty neat fight. The Bane Blade uses a lot of its weapons and they all have different effects, even more so when you blow off its turret and it tries to ram you with a very classic, get me closer, I want to hit them with my sword. There is one thing that has me annoyed though, and it isn't the biggest deal, but it really bugs me in this game. Right when you finish a level or, or kill a boss fight, there is no ending delay. Like just to let the music fade out or give some time to relax. Instead, the screen goes instant to loading screen and then instant out of loading screen, either to cutscene or gameplay again. It's just, it's really jarring and it kills the pacing massively. I know it's a random thing, but let me just show you a completely unedited example. Like, you see what I mean, right? The, the pacing is so off and it does this all the time. It needs a little bit of a cool down or at least not double up the transitions going from gameplay to loading screen, then gameplay or cutscene. It's just kind of jarring. It's a nitpick. It's like a major nitpick, but it's just, it's noticeable. So you move on to the next area and the environment has most certainly changed a little bit as have the enemies. Looks like Lutius has already had a major problem on their hands to start with. The entire next area is mostly Gene Stealer 
bottles and all of the crazy paraphernalia that comes with them. The enemy variety is enhanced too. There are your classic neophytes and then just infected guardsmen, but you'll find hybrids that have their third arm throwing demo charges, or you'll have a Sanctus that's this really fast stebby type. And of course, there's gotta be an aberrant in there somewhere. Bosses include your classic gene stealer, you know, the titular, a biophagist, which is was a pretty fun one. <laughs> But of course, as we all know with Gene Steeler cults, there is always a patriarch, and it is responded to exactly how you would expect. You will trespass in the tabernacle of the Earth. <laughs> the Patriarch fight is probably the best fight in the game. It's still very simple as all the gameplay here is, but I enjoy it a lot for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, I like the background design. You can see the effigies hanging from the ceiling and all the candles with the big old statue in the back. It's very neat. Secondly, the Patriarch moves quite quickly and fires these little homing psychic missiles at you. So you're playing both run away from the big stabby monster and also run away from the homing attacks at once. And lastly, the Patriarch will scurry away and let its conclave deal with you for a bit, which I think breaks up the action and makes it actually really fun. Now, it's not my favorite boss in the game, but it's one that I think should be looked at more if this game ever receives updates or DLC. You run away, you fight two gene stealers, and well. The next bit has you fighting a combination of the cult and the Imperium. More enemies are added, like the Bulgrin with their gauntlets and big old slab shields. And hey, you even get to fight a full-on Sentinel, which is shocking to me since this is later in the game. It's a later boss fight and you've already taken out a motherfucking Bane Blade. But that's okay, because right after this, you're dealing with something scarier than a Sentinel by far. The Space Marines are here. White Scars in particular. Good choice, I say. A fast orc game might as well have the fast Marines to go along with it. Honestly, the Space Marines though, they're, they're not that tough. They're tougher than some of the singular enemies in the game. You're just so incredibly busted as a singular orc, they aren't that frightening. Now, if they populated the game and they were a ton of Space Marines, okay, okay. They'd be a little bit of a threat, but they only throw a couple of them at you and they aren't really that much of a challenge. Which is too bad because like they're Space Marines. You did kill a Bane Blade, though. Though, they do find a middle ground because you're now fighting Tempestus Scions that actually are quite a threat in numbers. They're tankier, hit harder, and can sometimes carry plasma guns. And turns out, I was wrong. The Khan is back, and you get to take down a White Scar's chaplain and his squad, which I have to say, just looking at the chaplain walking around with his, his little, little crozius all, all stubby-like and trying to whack you with it, it it's, it's pretty adorable. It's very silly. I like it a lot. Combat in the War Room is strictly prohibited commissar strange loaf gentlemen you can't fight in here this is the war room turns out just like the tabletop the invicta tactical war suit dies to a swift breeze that's too bad but honestly this is all filler this is all prep work this is all just a gathering of strength like a gathering of power a gathering of will for the true fight the real climax of this game it's time for the number one reason to even buy this game. Attention, Orc! You face Lord Horik Kanorum, son of High King Varric Kanorum, High Prince of House Kanorum, Master of the Blade of Gaia, Keeper of the Gates of Loralo, Lord Horik Kanorum, son of High King of Valoric Kanorum, High Prince, etc., etc., is one of the most batshit ideas I've thought of for an orc game. Or 
I've seen for an orc game. Someone thought of for this orc game. Having a single orc take down a knight valiant, which, which by the way, good choice. That's my favorite knight. Uh, who's flamethrower. The conflagration cannon can melt a Lehman rust tank to sludge is so absolutely ridiculous that it's only offset by that absolutely bopping soundtrack. Rip that shit. Lord Hork is not the best fight in the game, but it is the most hype. There are two main issues with it. The first is that even though it took me far too long than I like to admit to figure this part out, all you gotta do is hide behind the boxes when he attacks you. That is really the entire fight, more or less. Block the Melta gun, dodge the flamer, dodge the harpoon. The missiles are really the only thing you need to think about because they homing on you. The second main issue is, come on, why didn't you put the entire subtitle on his health bar? Like literally, if you put it over the health bar and you even obscured the health bar with just lines of text, I wouldn't have minded it at all. It sucks that it's just Lord Horik. It should absolutely be the whole thing. Stick to your guns, maintain the meme. And hey, I'm just saying, when you kill him, he, he like explodes a little bit before they go jarringly into the glowing screen again, but he could still be in there. If you're gonna make DLC, bring him back. Bring him back and then like do the whole thing. Come on. This is my favorite boss fight though, just because it's so ridiculous and it's still fun even if the actual gameplay loop is a bit generic overall. Still, it's just not often you get to watch an orc bash down a knight valiant of all things, but I give them props for a lore accurate knight pilot. Knights are the most proper, pristine heralds of the, the goodwill of mankind, and they will shout their deeds to the he It's that entire monologue. Cheesy, sure, lore accurate, a little bit, a little bit. If we're being truly honest, the knight would have just killed him. But however, maybe it's not that strange of a thought process. I mean, have you ever read Brutal Cunning, in which two orcs, a grot, and a squig kill the warlord titan. You know, one of those things they show in the Horus Heresy trailer. That's a good book I'd recommend. The final section of this game is, of course, naturally in an orc game against other orcs. You make your way on gut wrecked ship and begin just blasting it up. You fight all manner of orcs, kill a cans, and even defy the laws of physics as the spaceship is open to the vacuum of space, which you, of course, use to float because orcs. The final boss fight against gut wrecker, it's a bit of a disappointment. All you do is jump up and you shoot him in the face on top of his giant stompa in which his stompa opens up and then you shoot stomach and you rinse and repeat that uh, like three times. It's probably the weakest fight in the game, which sucks because it's the final boss of the game. I expected him to like jump out and fight me on foot or something, but no, it's just, it's just this. You defeat him though, you take your hair squig back, then you lead your own wah in his stead and, and that's the game. You spend your teeth on various new hats in the store and all that, which you know, if I learned anything from TF2, hats are the true end game. And it might surprise you that it's already over, but yeah, that's the entire campaign. I beat it on normal mode in one sitting and it took me only around two to three hours. This normally wouldn't be a problem for me because it actually like a pretty good two to three hours and minus the weird loading screens, it was paced really well. But the game is $20. There also is really nothing else to do after being the campaign. You can play with friends, I guess, again, but you're still just playing it again. Hello, this is future bricky. After playing the game and go through the whole thing, I decided to also throw a little bit of a gameplay thing together for a stream with Adipus Ridiculous. Actually compiled the video for it as well. You can check that out in the description. But let's just say the co-op experience was not as good as the single player one. It was horribly, horribly buggy. Some things were funny, like the explosive friendly fire you can have. I, th I think maybe it's not necessarily friendly fire. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but we encountered a ludicrously large amount of bugs. Uh, DK, Diamantes. I, I, I jumped! My co-host crashed about four or five times in the two and a half hours it took us to play it. I shoved Lord Horik off the goddamn map, among many other weird things that happened. So another good disclaimer to add that. Um, yeah, can be can be a bit rough in the multiplayer part of it, which is unfortunate because I imagine that would be one of the better ways to play it if that wasn't the case. Also, check out Devs Ridiculous. We do Warhammer podcast stuff. Well, goodbye!
it's just extremely content light overall. It's a fun game for sure, but it's it's done so incredibly fast that you wonder if it really felt like it was worth the price tag for a shorter runtime than <laughs> Avengers Endgame. And depending on the theater you go to, costing more than the ticket for that movie. It's hard to justify this price tag, no matter how enjoyable those two to three hours were. When I go to my Steam page and see fucking Hollow Knight for $15, and I mean, sure, maybe it's unfair to compare it to Hollow Knight, an incredibly good game, but it is still a price per game Thing. It's up to you, sure. I think it's better suited as a clean 10 bucks. If it had another one to two hours of content, maybe, but right now I don't think I can recommend it at its price point, which is disappointing because it's still a lot of fun. The voice acting is hilarious and accurate to the lore. The mood is fun, the gameplay is fun, and the soundtrack is, is genuinely great. But it just doesn't reach a $20 price tag for two to three hours of gameplay, which is too bad because 40K games are often pretty shit. This one isn't shit. I guess it wouldn't be a Warhammer title if they didn't overcharge you. Thanks, James Workshop. Now I have to go give Codex Zotes an army-wide two plus invulnerable save. <laughs> <laughs> Shooters, Blood, and Teeth. It's a really fun time. I liked it a lot. $20 though. Not sure about that. If you're doing financially sound, you just don't care, you wanna play an orc game, have at it. I've spent a hell of a lot more money on tiny little plastic figures. So truly, I'm not quite sure how much of a say I get in this, but I'm letting you know. Thank you all so much for watching this video, everybody. Please do give my merch store a check. Check out some of the prints, posters, shirts, hoodies, everything in between. There's tons there that I would love to have you Bye, give me money. So I have multiple orc based questions, which is good. Which is your favorite orc unit on the tabletop? That would either be the Death Dread or perhaps, I like Burda Boys a lot. No, Commandos, it has to be Commandos. It has to be Commandos, I love Commandos, they're so fun. If you had to join any of the orc clans, which would you pick? Blood Axes, I like Blood Axes, they're really good. What is the best orc book? that you'd recommend. At the moment, I'd probably say Brutal Cunning. Yeah, Brutal Cunning is probably the best orc book I'd go with. The Gaskell book is pretty good too, but I think Brutal Cunning hits it out just a bit more. I would recommend that one. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry this didn't come out in Orktober, but you know, I, I tried. And we're gonna have lots of videos in November and December because there's a lot of games coming out. So uh, you'll see me again, hopefully pretty soon. Bye-bye. Come on, obviously you're a skater.